Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry. And more the blows. Oh, I always dread it when I have to work on the golf cart because it's so hard. I'm not gonna give you a whole summary of what I've done on this golf cart. You guys can go watch my playlist. Easy go golf cart. I've got like 30 videos on it. <laughs> Uh, today's a nice enough day, only be, not not so much because it's uh, warmer. It is, it's like 40, but um, because the sun's out, you know. When the sun's out, warms you up like 10 degrees. So uh, I like the sun. Today I'm gonna try to figure out what size belt I'm need to buy for my starter generator to the pulley on the clutch. Also, I'm gonna hook up the wiring. <laughs> oh my god. It's been so long since I worked on this, I don't even remember where those wires go, you know what I mean? I want to try to see if I can get the starter generator to turn the uh, clutch, uh, or at least turn, period, you know? Then I'm going to finally bolt down the engine bolts, because it seems like I can put on both belts with pretty much uh, uh, ease, without having to move the engine around. So I'm going to, for the first time, tighten down the engine. Uh, then kind of look at the choke cable and attach it somehow to the new Honda GX340 engine. And then, uh, I mean, I want to try to figure out the throttle too, you know, to the, to the gas pedal. Uh, I know with these golf carts, the gas pedal assembly, when you push the gas pedal down, it's supposed to engage the solenoid to turn the uh, pulley. You know, that's how you start the thing. I'm not just not too sure. You know, it's my fir very first golf cart. Uh, I've only driven one golf cart in my life, you know, and that was a propane one. But anyway, we'll see what happens. I'll just uh, <clears throat> take it bit by bit as I've been doing for the past, uh, I want to say six months now. I don't know, has it been six months? Maybe three months. Ah, six months. So here's what I got so far. The belt, which I bought, seems seems to be good. Seems to be the right one. Um, it's a, there's enough slack to get it over this to get over that, so I can bolt down the thing uh, here. As you guys know from the last episode, I fabricated the original bracket, drilled it into this beam over here. I have the starter generator there. Of course, it's like six inches more forward than the original one and this is the closest one that I have uh, I had some subscribers tell me that I could just make some kind of uh, I guess I could drill in here and put some kind of an arm with a pulley that pulls this down like that maybe put a spring going downwards to put downward pressure but I still don't think it'll work this is as high as it'll go, but I don't want it to go anymore because then this will ground out with that, you know, which is no good. So I, I think uh, I would have to go and buy a new belt. How am I going to figure out exactly uh, the right tension and length of the belt? Well, if I pull this straight like that, right, with some tension, look what's leaking out. So. I'd say that's, uh, what would you say? One, two, three, four. I want to say with some good tension, five inches. Does that look like five inches to you? I can pull it tighter. Just to be safe, right? One, two, three. Yeah, I, I'd say like five inches shorter than this one. Problem is, I don't know what length this is. So I get, guess I'll get a tape measure and try to figure out what length that is. Uh, also the wiring. I have to eventually work on the brakes too. So the wiring, uh, I'm not sure what this green thing is. There's a black wire that goes here and a green wire that goes here. I want to say there should be something there, but I don't know where the wire is. Oh, it could be this ground wire down here. It's 
It's been so long since I worked on this part of it that I'm just not sure. And why does this have like two? <laughs> I might have to go watch my videotape again. I need this thing to spin today and figure out the size of that uh, belt. It's not a precise science. I'm gonna try to get as close as I can. So this belt here is um, 47 inches. This belt here is too short, and this is 39 inches. If I added five inches, which I thought it would be, uh, it would be uh, 44 inches, right? What did I say this was? 47, did I say 47? 47 minus five is 42. I go with 43 inches 47 inches I measured again the only way I'm gonna really know is to just cut this I know I mean it's not a great it's a bad one anyway you know so I'm just gonna cut it so I know that this is 47 inches long and I'll put it on there cut an inch off at a time and see if that'll work I know there's an easier way to do it but I just don't know how to do it. All right, now we got the thing cut. It's a half inch uh, thick, okay? So if it's tight, you should do it right there. It's tight. Mark it right there. Yep, that's about right. So let's see. Uh, my estimate, just with the naked eye, at four inches. Were we right? Oh, I'm not. See, oh, uh, I said five inches, right? So, actually, I just need a difference of three and a half inches. So if this is a 47 inch minus three and a half inches, right? Then we need a 43 and a half. Yeah. I'll try to find a half inch by 43 and a half belt. So I'm measuring again. You know what they say, you measure, measure twice, cut once. So uh, it was actually three and a quarter, not three and a half. So, I mean, just, just, uh, it's better to order the the bigger one than the little one. You know why? Because look, if I ordered it too long, this could still pivot down another half inch. See, so that'll take it up, and I could just tighten this and make some kind of a brace to hold it there like that. But it gives it gives me a little it gives me a half inch of uh, slack. You know, so I can order. Uh, one that's a uh, half inch, I mean perfect, right? But if it's not perfect when you put it on, it's different when you're measuring than when you actually have it on, you know what I mean? So then uh, if it's too long and there's some slack, like some uh, movement here, you can just pull this down and it'll tighten it, you know? And then tighten the bolts here to get keep that in place. Uh, you could actually put some spacers in here to prevent this from moving backwards too, or a spring or whatever, you know? So I, I think... Uh, 43 if i could find one for 43 then then that'll be fine i think actually i measuring it with it still cut like that wasn't the right way to do it you actually have to do the outer diameter so if i did the outer diameter by stepping on it and pulling it tight it's not 47 it's actually 46 and a half so i'm glad i measured that again so 46 and a half minus three and a half is 43 right 46 and a half minus three and a half is 43 so i need to get a 43 inch belt that'll do it because the amount of uh stuff that i need to get rid of is exactly three inches did i say three inches three and a half inches and that's now <laughs> now that that's now three and three quarters i gotta sit and do some math now 
I know I'm Asian and I, my math should be better, you know? So 46.5, which is the length of the belt, minus 3.75 is 42. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to get a half inch by 43. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to order a half inch by 43 belt. That ought to do it. I mean, I think this ground cable goes here. I don't know why there's another one there, but I can't seem to find another area to put that, you know? Whatever. It's ground, so if it doesn't work, I know I'll put it on somewhere else. These two I know go there. The difficult part is this one over here. The black, the black one is actually it goes to the positive of the solenoid. See? On the top here, that's the wire. So this is positive. Green one, I think, goes back to recharge the battery is what I'm thinking. Then I'll have to connect the battery back to on the terminals. Uh, battery hasn't been charged for probably over, over a month and a half, two months. Son of a... Let's test this battery. Uh, like I said, it's been a while since I used it. But I believe I did charge it up three months ago and desulfated it. Ooh, 12.48. That's pretty good. Let me connect this uh, positive terminal. Okay, uh, I tightened the bolts on the three wire connections that I did. I put the uh, battery terminal back on here. Now I'm going to jump the solenoid and see if it spins. Let's see if this starter spins while we wait for the new belt, the 43 inch belt. You ready? Ooh, cool. All right. Is that spinning in the right direction? It's counterclockwise. So it's counterclockwise. It has to turn this counterclockwise, right? If it's that going this way, this thing looks, needs to go that way. Let me go pull the rope and see if it goes counterclockwise in the same direction, just so I'm not crazy. Okay, I'm pulling it, ready? Is that going counterclockwise? It absolutely is, so that's good. So if I have this switch on, when the engine power switch is on, on and not off, then it would, turning that would mimic this being pulled and that would turn the engine on, see? Uh, then once it's on, does it continue to charge the green wire, charge it back to the battery? That's to charge the battery. Uh, here's a question for you guys. If you guys know Honda engines, uh, obviously I wanna move the switch the Honda on and off switch to the front dash eventually. How do I, if I just, cause I can't, because of the engine being on here like this, I can't get this cover off to take this off, okay? So I'm thinking about just disconnecting this wire here, getting, buying another switch for the front and just connecting it back onto here. Is there another wire underneath this switch or is it just a one uh, wire connection? Cause it looks like it's just a one wire connection, obviously. Uh, yeah, that one wire connects these two, right? So if you, if you cut these two wires and connected them, it would always be on, right? Or off, one of those. So let me know if you guys have changed a Honda switch before, is it just that one wire? Or is there something else underneath this, which means I'd have to take the switch off? I mean, uh, maybe it's connected to the ground, but I don't think so. You know, let me know. Some of you have also asked, uh, you notice that when I put this bracket on, you see that that's the oil filler reservoir, right? You couldn't even get this cap off if you wanted to, right? I mean, I guess you, you could try, but it would be really tough to get that off. Um, over there, can you see it? There's a hose that you can drain the oil from. 
is there another dipstick? Aha! Uh -huh. There's another reservoir here where I could uh, try to get oil into by using like a funnel with a with a hose or something. So I could get oil in there somehow if I had to. Remember, I changed the oil on this in the beginning. So this should be good for a while. Okay, I'm underneath now. Here's the plate. I'm going to tighten the engine bolts. I've got a wrench on the top. As you can see, there's one, there's two. This one doesn't seem to have a bolt. Now, how am I going to get a bolt in there? Look at the, the wall that's in the, in the place of it. That's no good. And I can't even find the other one. That's on there. This is gonna be hard. I can't even see it. Son of a bitch. Oh man. One hand to use a wrench to grab the top. It's not staying. One hand to do that. Can't see. This sucks. Son of a bitch. So I've got my hand contorted on the top with another wrench. It's a ratchet wrench. My face is pretty much against the... Uh, and I can only turn it a quarter turn at a time. Because the wall is there, I can't have a washer. This sucks. I've been at this for a while. <sighs> this is why I didn't want to um, put the engine bolts on. I was dreading it because I knew that wall was there. I could have cut the wall, but I'd have to remove the entire plate to do it again. So you know what? I'm just going to chip, chip away at this. It's always a challenge to get the camera in an angle where you guys could see. That way, you can feel like you're doing it with me. Um, it's tight enough so that bolt now is resting against the wall, so I don't have to hold it, you know, it won't move. So I'm going to take this ratchet wrench and just do 40 uh, quarter turns until it's super tight. I have to do uh, it again for the fourth and final mounting bolt. Pain, pain, pain! So after bolting down the engine, right? Things move a little differently now, now that it's torqued down. Look what I discovered. So the plate is on rubber stoppers. So it has some kind of give that moves with the suspension of the shops, the rear transmission, right? So you have to have this be able to pivot a little so the engine could move with the transmission off this rubber stopper here. This is to give it some movement, you know? But because of that, the movement will eventually make a hole in my gas tank. So I'm just gonna get a grinder and cut an inch off this corner here, because I don't need this. I have my right mind to just take the whole thing off, but I think the stopper uh, is it helps the seat, you know? So I need this bracket. I just need to cut it like that. Sometimes I worry about using a grinder because there's always a risk of uh, getting hurt, you know?
Nie rano. What is holding this on here? Unbelievable, man. <laughs> the gas tank is holding on there. There we go. Look at the damage it's done to that corner already. I think it'll be all right. If it's not, I'll put some JB weld on it, but it looks good it's on top. Okay, so now the engine is mounted. I've uh, fixed this problem of rubbage. We've uh, placed the wires on the starter, tested it, test the solenoid, it does spin. I'm gonna order that half inch by 43 belt. Next, we've got this choke cable, see? This choke cable is one that I installed and it leads to this little knob where you pull it out. So I wanna get it so that it um, goes in and out. When I pull the knob, like so. And then, have it connected somehow to the lever for the carburetor on the Honda. This is run, this is choke. So this way I can control the choke lever from outside the cabin, uh, you know, from the driver's seat. So I'm thinking I'm gonna drill a tiny hole in that lever, make a Z-bend on this, and then secure it to what looks like a place where you can put the cable. Loosen this uh, nut or screw, put this cable through it, and it holds it there while this thing goes in and out. I'm gonna try that now. Gotta get a drill bit that's at least uh, bigger than that. Actually, I think the drill bit is too thick. I have to get a smaller one. What do you think? Is that exactly the same? Or a little bigger. I think that'll do. This one over here is too thick. You know what, I, this is not going down because the drill bit is too short and I can't get my impact through here. Or, damn, I'm gonna have to think of another way. What I got here, I got an extension drill that goes into a half inch socket, which goes into an extender socket bar to a <laughs> half inch uh, impact. Let's see if this will work. Uh, I still don't think it'll work. It might. It's not as steady as a drill. Ooh. Ooh. That worked. Gotta have the right tools, fellers. Let's see if this wire fits in there. Seems a little, seems a little too big. That's what she said. I have to make this hole bigger. Oh no, it goes in. That's what she said. I'm gonna have to make a Z-bend now. You know what's annoying? Is that I bought a Z-bender, you know, a tool that creates Z-bends and I couldn't find it every time I needed it. And then when I didn't need it, I found it. But then now I don't remember where I put it again. I remembered, I said, I'm gonna put it somewhere where I know I'm gonna find it next time. But of course, now that I need it, as usual, I can't find it. So I'm just gonna try to bend it with this thingamajig. I don't even know what this is. I think this is a wire cutter or something. This is not gonna work. I'm so annoyed. You guys know what I mean? I know you know what I mean. Yeah, I can't bend that. 
and just found this thing I don't know what it is but it seemed to work uh, this is not a z-bend because I don't have the tool it's impossible to make it I mean it you can but I think this will be good enough oh I am so annoyed I'm experiencing maximum degree of to buy a tool that you need but you don't need right away and then when you do need it, you can't find it. When you don't need it, you find it. You put it somewhere because you know you're going to need it. And then you can't find it when you need it. Unbelievable. Oh. Oh, maximum amount of annoyance. Oh. Anyway, uh, I just did that thing like that. And, uh... Henry, we can't see. I'm annoyed. I don't care. <laughs> all right see he's following what i'm doing here all right that's fully ex let's see is that fully extended uh i want to pull it that's what she said <laughs> all right that's that's not really all the way though it is all the way is that all the way so if i tighten this and then push it, it ought to go all the way run. Right? That's tight. Let's see if does that go all the way, if I push it all the way in. Let's see. Uh, it moves, but it doesn't go all the way. I have to extend it. Yeah. I have to push it out more like that. So if I push it, and that does that. That's all the way run now. Okay. Okay, that's all the way run. Then I pull it to choke. Does it go all the way to choke? Yes. It does. You have to run it now. Push it. Goes all the way to run. Well, almost. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Tighten it down. So look, you want to choke? Chokes all the way. You know, when a uh, engine starts, you want it to run. Goes all the way. So that now my choke cable is done. So today. Finally bolted down the engine, cut this little corner so that the gas tank doesn't rub against it. We don't know what this is really for anyway, except for maybe holding the seat up, which is important. But uh, now it doesn't rub on there. We got the choke cable to be routed right to the choke lever on the Honda engine. That's great. While I was annoyed I couldn't find the Z-Bend tool, I'm over it now. You just got to get over it, you know? Waiting for you guys to tell me whether or not this switch is just one wire coming out of it or is there a uh, wire underneath the switch. Uh, wired up the starter generator, connected the battery to it, tested the solenoid to see if it spins and it does. We're getting closer. I'm going to order a half inch by 43 inch uh, V-belt so that it fits snugly from the starter generator to the pulley on the clutch. We're getting there. We have uh, the, mu the original muffler I'd like to put on this because it's a much quieter engine, you know, muffler that, that so it's not so loud. I'd like to do that, uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, we'd have to figure out uh, a start switch and also the throttle cable from the foot pedal to the throttle. Got to figure that out too. Uh, that might be the hardest one because uh, I'm not sure whether or not it should be engaged from the solenoid should be engaged from stepping on the pedal or should I just hook up the pedal directly to the throttle and just let it go that way have a switch that separately just turns on the engine you know uh, that's why I need to know about the switch because I can't get the engine cover off now that the engine has been bolted on here to take the switch off. So I'm just gonna buy another switch, cheap, it's like $10.
So if I can just buy a new switch, put it on the dash somewhere, and wire the wire to this, it just needs to shut on and off, that's all. It, turns, it, uh, it controls the magneto on or off. So uh, that's a big piece of it today. I, I, I don't look forward to working on this every time I come out here, but I know that it eventually needs to be done. Uh, my neighbors are starting to say, hey, are we ever going to see you driving around the neighborhood in that thing? I'm like, uh, anyway, thanks all for joining me on today's Easy Go 1200 workhorse uh, utility golf cart with a Honda engine in it. <laughs> uh, and then we got to paint it too, you know, oh my God, there's just so much stuff going on. Uh, remember to buy some stickers, support the channel, keep me coming out here and keeping you entertained. Uh, peace out to everybody. My heart's with Ukraine. Uh, Hold on to the land, baby. Hold the line. Uh, see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.